The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. They're going to see something about your life that they're going to know that there is a God in heaven and that God is with you. They're going to see your home. They're going to see your car. They're going to see your children. They're going to see your relationship. They're going to see everything they're going to see and they're going to say, wow, these are sinners. These are people who don't know God, but know that there's something with you. If I follow scripture, say amen now. I'm not supposed to be in lack. I'm supposed to be the lender. Say amen to this. And God is just wondering now in Joshua chapter 18 and verse three, would you please that turn over there and we're just gonna read that right quick. Praise the Lord. Ready? Read. And Joshua said unto the children has what? He didn't sell it to you. What did he do? He gave it to you because it belonged to Adam and Adam sinned and went on the other side. But the last Adam just came and the last Adam came to take it all back. See, to put it in the hands of its rightful what? Owners. Now, this is part of the kingdom. When the king, this is why this conversion is about to take place. When I say that, I mean inversion. When the, 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 the stuff is going to go back into the, the right hands. See, are you with me here? Cindy Jacob says, it's not about black or white. It's about justice. Now I better come over here. See, look, look at the kingdom. Isaiah chapter nine and verse six. I want you to see that. The stuff is in the wrong hands, so everything is out of order. But the kingdom is coming to order it. It's coming to put it back in order. Are y'all with me here? So that's very important for you to know. Now you're not gonna get up and jump, my name is Jimmy, I'll take all you give me. That's not the uh, idea. God has a plan for you. Now let's look at the second part of this. Let's look at this whole idea of there is no shortage. Say that in Jesus name. There is no shortage. Now the enemy with cleverly has painted a picture that people are living in shortage. All right. A man named John Avanzini back in 1989 wrote a book called the wealth transfer. And so he did study to see what kind of wealth was out there. First, he looked at the uh, mineral wealth. What kind of mineral wealth is out there? The gold and so forth and so on. And he did study. He said in the next 20 years, this is the kind of wealth, not the wealth that's already out there, but this is the kind of wealth that's going to be, in, be produced in the next 20 years. And the kind of wealth that's going to be produced in the next 20 years in just mineral wealth is roughly a little over $50 trillion dollars. Fifty trillion dollars. Now why? Put up there uh, Psalm chapter 104 and verse 24. The earth is what? See, God, now, now that's a little over 50 trillion dollars in the next 20 years. That'd make it 2009. Next is commodities. Yes, now, commodities are things like uh, oil. oil, all of that. All right. Now, look at this. 
This oil is projected to produce roughly 52, 53 trillion dollars of wealth in the next 20 years. That is by 2009 trillion, a little over 50 trillion commodities and minerals. Now, how about coal itself? Just coal. Wow. How much is that going to produce? 383. 383. 383. This is coal being produced. And this is why it's going it's to produce that over the next 20 years. Now, the earth is what? Full of his riches. Now, I know that you can strike oil. And as a believer, your well will never run dry. Just like he filled up the woman's vessel, just like, come on, just like he filled up Peter's net, he can fill up that well, that, 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 that. come on now. Are you feeling? Because the earth is what? full of God's riches. See this, this, all right, now um, let's, let's keep going. So what is the reason for the sense of shortage? Why are people short? And one of the first reasons why people short is because of sacred cows. Now that's what I call them. Now this is nations that don't eat the cow because in their religion, the cow is a reincarnation of one of their relatives. And that's their belief. So the cow can't be eaten. Now this cow <laughs> might be some food they need to keep from being short. So some religious beliefs keeps people in certain countries in shortage. Another one is the absence of self-production. That people don't know that they have a gift. Everybody was born with a gift and that if they could just use their gift, I, you've got people here now, Michelle, who has a syrup business. Look, she found an old recipe she, over there in welfare, found an old recipe and the recipe, she said, I'm going to make this, made the syrup, self-production, took her up to a million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the blessing on your life. Jesus, when the storm came, what did he do with the storm? He spoke to it. What happened to it? It stopped. Clouds disappeared. Everything. Cannot you speak to the environment? Now, I'm, 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 I'm letting you know this now because, because of the church has not awakened to its righteousness. And the fact that the church is the caretaker of the earth. Say amen. Isn't it just like the devil to stir up something and have you run to a fix that is human rather than run to a fix that is heavenly. A heavenly fix can take coal and be able to manufacture this cold in a way that it will not have any measurable results in terms of affecting the environment. See, you don't believe it because you don't believe you, you can do this. See, look, Lord have mercy. Now, I'm, I'm saying something now because if you watch enough of this television, Oh, you, you, I, nothing wrong with getting yourself an electric car if you want to, but you better be in control of the electricity because there is a demon that is trying to get control of everything, control of the economy, 
control of the goal. Watch this. Control of your children. I don't care what you think about me. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you what God told me to tell you because it's trying to keep you from getting that money. And I declare you're going to get that money because that money belongs to you. That money does not belong to the devil. 1% of America's population owns 33% of America's wealth. And 60% of the, of the stocks of, of corporations. I'm only saying 1% is controlling it and controls the media, controls it. It controls what you hear. You've got to hear something other than what the devil is trying to say. You got to hear God. And one place you can hear God is listen to your prophet. Amen. And your prophet's going to tell you, as long as you believe certain things, you're blocking the way to your truth. Yes. And the truth comes, you start fighting it off. What you need to do is get rid of them lies and receive the truth yes. and understand that, wait a minute, I can get rid of this asthma. I can get rid of it by the power of the living God. Yes. Next is take it back. Take it all back. I said, take it all back. <laughs> now, take it all back. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse eight. Now, I know some of you, when I said that, I can feel a little dip in the anointing, but I'm not paying any attention to that. Let me tell you what the Lord, let me, let me just show you. In, say innovation. Innovation. Psalm, put, it, put this up there first. Psalm chapter 72 and verse 18. Psalm 72 and verse 18. Watch this. Ready? Read. Bless the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only did the wonders. Wondrous things are things that no man can match. Nobody can invent like you. Nobody. Why did Detroit go bankrupt? That, that lack of ideas. They had a lack of ideas. Why? Because they all got involved in union and trying to get myself and keep myself with the right money coming in and so forth. Watch this. Meanwhile, they weren't innovating. And watch this. Toyota was coming right on their heels. Toyota made you a little car that would last 50 years if you drove it. I'm just saying you, you got 200,000 miles on your car. That was nothing for a Toyota. And they made, I'm telling you, they made GM shape up. They made a, all the other automakers. I'm just saying this is what happened. And I'm saying to you right now, it's been the devil. And he's been doing certain things to keep the economy in his hands and keep control of the people. But the church is here. I said the church is here. And we will, I'm just laying a foundation for this now. Because we're going to come up with some inventions that's going to be able to, to, to get, get oil so pure that you can't tell the difference between the oil and the air. We're we going to get, come on, I'm telling you what we can do. See, that's why the church is here. Take it all back. Say, take it all back. So here you've got uh, Deuteron uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. Now this is David after the enemy has come in and wiped him out. Sold the, way, sold the goods, sold the children, sold the, the wives, took everything. David went before the Lord to David, God, what should I do? Ready? Read. Without fail, what? I want David, I want you to take it all back. David, I want you to take it all back. Take back this, take back that. Doesn't make any difference. See, it is amazing. Let me tell you something about God's people. If you don't want to hear the truth, why are you saved? No, if you don't want to hear the truth, 
Why did you get saved? Well, I just want to miss hell when I die. Okay, well, that's one reason. Don't take up the seats in the church. You can stay home and do that. All right, y'all with me? Cause I'm gonna tell you the truth cause the truth is gonna make you, gonna make you free. All right, so here's David and notice he's gonna recover how much? He's gonna recover everything. Now here's Joshua, watch this. Joshua chapter one and verse three. This is the God gave me to take them all. Joshua one, three, ready, read. Stop right there. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given it to you. Now God leads you where to go. Look at Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. You on your way to success right now. Now look, here's the first battle Joshua's got to fight. Joshua 6 verse 1. First battle he's got to fight. Notice the land was being lived on. The land was being lived on by somebody else, but God said it doesn't belong to them. It belongs to you. Like I said, you don't have to, you don't have to fight nobody, get a knife and gun. No, no, no. God says there's a wealth that the wicked have that's going to transfer over into the hands of the just. Say amen to that. Or those that please God. Ready? Read. Now Jericho was greatly shut up because of the children of Israel. None, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty Stop right there. He began to give him the instructions as to how to get it. Now there are four ways mainly that is going to transfer. Are you ready for that? All right. The first is wisdom. The first is wisdom. Look at first Kings and chapter uh, 10 and verse 10. Ready? Read. And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices very great store now look, look, wait a minute. She's given him all of this because he told her what to do with her government so that she could settle some problems that she was having. And that came from the spirit of wisdom. So I'm saying the spirit of wisdom is on you right now. And that's going to be one of the ways God's going to transfer wealth over into your hands. When I was uh, getting a solution for a man who was a chairman of the Fortune Five here in this area, he said, what can I do to help black youth? And I said, I don't know what you can do today, but give me seven days, I'll come back with the answer. I came back with the answer, I told him. He said, Reverend, I've got $40,000 in my chairman's fund now. He gave me all he had. He had $40,000 in it now. He could get more, but this is all he had right now. Notice wisdom made him give all he had over to me because I gave him wisdom in terms of solving his problem. Are y'all with me here? Another one is favor. God transfers to you the wealth by favor. Look at what he says over in Psalm chapter 44 and verse three, please. Psalm 44 and verse three, ready, read. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm stay them, but thy right hand was and thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast favor unto them. Now notice what he did. They didn't get it by their own strength. They got it by God's favor. Where's an example of that? It's found in Exodus chapter 12 and verse uh, t- uh, 35. Let's look at that. Ready? Read. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they brought the Egyptians, Moses, and Aaron, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Everything you require, he's going to make them lend it to you. But notice when they went through the Red Sea, God canceled the debt. Say amen to that. All right. How's another one here? 
He gives it to them by recompense. Recompense is when somebody does you wrong, they're going to have to pay. Let's look what it says. The book of Genesis chapter 20 and look at verse 16. Ready? Read. And he said to Sarah, look, I am giving you a woman, 1,000 pieces of silver in the presence of the Lord. So God's going to make people who did you wrong. Come on, go in their pocket, go in their bank account and give you something. Now the last one is sowing and reaping. Now I'll tell you about that. Remember Peter had his boat and he would Luke five. And then Peter, he, he was broke. I mean, he didn't have anything. Wasn't catching any fish. What did Jesus do? He sat down in Peter's boat and taught the gospel. And next thing he told him to launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Now, what qualified Peter for that big catch? His boat. His boat was his seed. And he sowed a sacrifice seed and God showed up. Now, I'm saying to you, if none of these others is working for you, go in your bank account and get yourself some seed and sow a sacrifice seed and break the power of the devil trying to make you believe that you don't inherit anything in this earth. Folks, this is time for the transfer and you are the ones God's been waiting for. Next thing is think big. Lord have mercy. Think big. Because the stuff that they got is big. The things that are going to come over are big. I am not saying that you're going, hang around somebody, your stuff belongs to me, all that kind of attitude. You just please God and use the, the, the wisdom of God. You sow the seed of God and so forth. My point to you is, I want you to start envisioning that it all belongs to you. Let's read Deuteronomy 28 verses one and two first, okay? Keep going. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Stop right now. Now go to verse 8 and we'll start right there. Verse 8, please. All right. Ready? Read. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. He's going to do what? He's going to come, man. come on, come on, help me. Now. God said to the prophet Elijah, go down there to Zarephath. I have commanded a woman to take care of you. Come on, when God commands something, birds have to obey. Look at verse 10. Let's start there. Verse 10, Deuteronomy 28, 10, ready, read. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. Now this is your promise. Are you a seed of Abraham? Yes. This is supposed to be your promise. Yes. They're supposed to see something about your life yeah, yeah, yeah. that tells them that God is with you. Yes. Say amen. Yes. I'm guaranteeing you they ain't going to say that because you got your Sunday meeting, your motor, Sunday go to meeting hat on. I'm, it, <laughs> I'm not saying that because your dress is long. I'm saying that they're going to see something about your life that they're going to know that there is a God in heaven and that God is with you. They're going to see your home. They're going to see your car. They're going to see your children. They're going to see your relationship. They're going to see everything they're going to see and they're going to say, wow. These are sinners. These are people who don't know God, but know that says something with you. Well, praise the Lord. I trust that you enjoyed that teaching. Now, 
That is called Take It All Back. Now, this is where you'll see the various ways that the wealth can be transferred into the hands of a believer. And one is wisdom, another sowing and reaping, another uh, favor, recompense, things like that. It's just not one way. But God has several ways he can transfer the wealth into our lives so that we could finish his work. And that's what it's really for. In Jesus' name, praise God. Now, you need to get this teaching because what happens, it's got to not only wake up a desire in us for the transfer, but it also gives us faith for the transfer. And you need both. You need that desire for it and the faith to make it happen. So these teachings, listening to them over and over again, will bring out these nuggets of truth that you need so that you can finish the work God's called you to do. It's a powerful teaching. Remember, this wealth transfer is supposed to be transferred from the wicked into the hands of the just. That's scripture. Why? So that we can finish his work. Isn't that powerful? Praise God. Well, this is Bill Winston saying we'll see you next time. Until then, keep walking by faith. Today's power-packed teaching, Take It All Back, is available in its entirety. To order this three-part series on CD or MP3, on DVD or MP4, contact us at 1-800-711-9327 or online at BillWinston.org. The God kind of faith is the faith that takes and not the faith that waits. We as believers are to do wondrous things that are impossible for the world to match. Our portion of this earth is to dominate and reclaim what the devil has stolen, destroyed, hindered, and held up from its rightful owners. It's time to take it all back. I've got a question for you. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Now, somebody asked me that one time. I said, I don't know, you know. Well, here's the deal. He came and gave his life for all humanity. Why? So that all our sins be forgiven and that we can be in a family of God from now on. That's what happened to me. And when I prayed the prayer of faith, I knew something had taken place. My whole life had changed. I want to get you to pray that same prayer. It only takes a moment. Just say this, Dear Lord, come into my heart. I believe in you that you died for my sins and you're alive right now. Now, Lord, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you said it from your heart, a miracle just took place. You are now with the family of God. I want to send you a book. It's called Born Again in Spirit Filled. It's a book that tells you what the next steps are, free of charge. Welcome to the family of God and keep walking.